Hi, how are you today? Hello, I'm good. How are you? <laughs> good. Thank you. Um, congratulations. This is such a cool little documentary, you know, oh, for any Disney you. fan. <laughs> you seem so <laughs> excited. I love that energy. Um, so first, I just wanted to start and um, I was wondering why you picked Olaf as the character to draw. Mm-hmm. Well, so when we when we were first uh, asked, like, oh, would you like to be part of the show? And I'm like, oh, yes, please. Um, we they asked like, what, who would you like to draw? And I think we, we all got to, I think most people all kind of like said like, oh, maybe one of these few. And, and I think Olaf was definitely like a big, big, like number one amongst the characters I wanted to draw. Cause it's like, I think Olaf is kind of like the quintessential like, character that kind of almost like sim- symbolizes how we work and make our films at Disney because he's he's made like in the film he's kind of this like snowman but he's made up of all these snow particles but he's also kind of like the the a combination of like the love and memories of of Anna and Elsa kind of put together into a being and so to speak and I feel like like he's partly like created by the directors who came up with him in the story but Bill Schwab who did the design the original design for him and then I got to take part in the designing process of his like newer version and and also like Josh Gad who did his does his voice so brilliantly and and all the animators like Hiram and Trent who are the animation supervisors for him it's like everyone put together he's like made up of all all the love and hard work and and like it's kind of like a mix of like all our all of our little souls in a way (laughs) so I I love that he like signifies that so I hope he could kind of like like show that side to of our studio too yeah that's amazing that's that's that (laughs) that was like such a cute little way to describe it I love it um so speaking of kind of what's your process is there you know, a section of, of your animation that you start with, I don't know, maybe the eyes or something like that. What's your process like when you're approaching a character? Um, a lot of times I do like the eyes and the face is definitely a focal part. I do start by roughing them out like really, really lightly with, I, I always like using like a red or blue, blue colored pencil. There's this pencil called Cold Erase that kind of like the animator rough pencil and it and it's supposed to be a colored pencil that erases is easier and stuff and so I always like using the red or the blue for that and and it's always like a great way to just like really rough out the entire pose because not just the face but the entire body silhouette and pose really needs to like sing out the emotion that the character is feeling at the time so so it's it's good to like not bo- get bogged down by the little details first. But once I do that, I always love to start with the eyes and the face when I start going in there with the details. Awesome. Um, do you think like do does the picture of the character usually come to you right away? Or I know sometimes the actors that voice the characters also influence the you know the way um animators create the characters. So I don't know how does it work for you? It's definitely a mixture uh there's always the great starting point when because we have the voice recorded by the the actors but we also have the storyboard that's drawn for that scene by the storyboard artist and then there's also this meeting called issuing for the animators and that's when the animators when we get assigned a certain shot the directors will go through it with us and tell us like what the character's feeling, like what what kind of importance this shot has in the film and everything. And so usually like we we kind of take that all with us and then we start listening, like listening to the vocal recording, like we'll listen to it like a thousand times at least, I feel like. <laughs> like and And so when I do that, a lot of times I'll start by doing little drawings, which I call thumbnails. And, and uh, I mean, some people really draw them like bigger. I actually tend to really draw them like really, really tiny, but it's like a really great fun way to jot down my ideas really quickly. So 
So there's like, there's going to be a page with a ton of like tiny Olaf's on the page or, or tiny like Anna's or Elsa's there. And so I'll start with that and, and I'll sometimes I'll act it out in front of the, the uh, mirror. And so like, I, it's kind of like this big process of like kind of putting all that together and then trying to like distill it into one really clear idea as much as possible. All right. I need a video of that, of you just acting out your, your scenes. Oh though. gosh. <laughs> there's that would be there's fun a lot of those that I, I put in a secret folder. So hopefully no one will see. <laughs> um, so I can see obviously just how passionate you are about animation. So can you tell me um, kind of what led you down this path and what you hope people take away from your story when, when they see it? Um, I think, I mean, I, don't even know like how it started but I think ever since I can remember I loved drawing and I loved watching cartoons and and I loved the characters and the stories and I didn't even know what being an animator was or like how animation was made but I just really felt like I need to be part of that somehow I'm gonna I'm gonna draw that somehow and somehow I'll make it move I don't know how that works but somehow and and I think I, I took a very roundabout way to actually getting to the place where I, I could learn animation and really do what I wanted to do. But I think in, in that story and also the all the other stories that the other artists tell too, I think there's there's so much of a variety in how people started and how people got there. And, and I think it would be great for the audience to just feel like like it's not, one path or it's like it's something that's possible and it's possible in all these different ways and sometimes it takes longer sometimes it takes shorter but but I think there's there's a there's like an there's an excitement and hope in that that people feel so hopefully we can kind of like relay that feeling to people watching definitely um so can you tell me a little bit about your story and your journey kind of to Disney and how you got there Oh yeah, that's a that's a really long story in a way, <laughs> but I think it definitely starts with what I was talking about just a second ago. Where, um, oh sorry, my HomePod thinks I was telling it to do something, <laughs> but um, and started with drawing and loving drawings and cartoons and and my mom introduced me onto a lot of the Disney feature films and and I just loved watching those and there was also these little specials that I would watch that would show the behind the scenes of some of the makings of the films and I said like okay I'll I want to do that I don't know what that even is but I'll do that and I think I I wanted to study art but then I didn't really want to go into fine arts so much so I I started out by saying like okay in college I will I will study astronomy and then I'll do my drawings on the side. And, and I think my mom thought that that would be, that would be fun, but I think you really should just pursue what you really want to do. And uh, there weren't, there's a lot right now, but there weren't a lot of really great animation programs in Korea for college. And, uh, and then the art, education was very traditional and but now there's a lot of like really great animation schools and departments and like art departments and stuff but at the time there weren't and my mom thought like oh you should you love Disney you should go to the states and let's let's see if if that gets you like a better head start and get you to be able to learn all the things and do all the things that you love and and I was able to come and even the school I initially went to didn't have an animation department, but, but I learned more art. And I think that all kind of like snowballed into like a moment where I finally got to CalArts and, and then I got to meet some really great teachers there and, and then suddenly it just kind of like became a crash course of like, this is everything I wanted to learn. And I think I was very, very lucky in that 
I had like really lucky timing. So when I was geared up to graduate CalArts in 2007, that's when Disney said, oh, we're starting the talent development program again. And we're also going to make Princess and the Frog hug in hand-drawn animation. So I think that that was like my dream come true where I got to really apply and get accepted. And, and it, it was, it was like a weird, like, it was like a weird moment where you feel like, Oh, I've been wanting this for so long. And it felt like it had been evading me and I kept going the wrong roundabout way, but suddenly everything just like clicked into place. So, you got there eventually. <laughs> yes. I got there eventually. Okay. And I know a big part of that uh, was due to your mom, uh, like mm-hmm. you mentioned, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and she. I think she just she she just loved like she was such a big big uh, fan of like me drawing and me pursuing art and and I think like she she always thought that like I didn't need to like we in Korea a lot of times if you have really really good grades or everyone wants you to be like a lawyer or doctor or like if like if someone said like oh you have good grades then why are you why do you want to study art why do you want to do cartoons that's such a waste that I think that's how a lot of older generation people would think but but my mom said like this is what you want to do and I want you to find the best way to get there and uh, she like there was actually a point during high school when I said like you know what I don't want to go to America I don't want to be far away from you you're you're not your health isn't well and and I don't think I, I want to just like do what I can do while I'm nearby and and she really like she actually scolded me and got really upset saying like like don't don't this isn't about me or my health. I want you to do what you need to do. And that's what will make her happy. And so, so she, she actually passed away as I was finishing high school, but I think she's, she's there all along throughout the journey. Definitely. All right. I didn't mean to make you cry. So no, it's okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. I end up doing that with interviews. Uh, a lot, so sorry about that. No, no. Um, do you think that is there going forward with your work? Have you, um, I don't know, have you somehow maybe paid tribute to your mom in a way with like one of your characters? Uh, I, I'm guessing maybe like, I'm sure, like you just said, you feel her with you. Um, you know, how have you kind of taken that loss and put it into your work? Um, I think the biggest way I got to do that was the film I made as I was graduating CalArts called The Chestnut Tree. So that film was really like my tribute to to my mom and my childhood. And, and I think I was putting like everything that I had learned in animation into it and saying like, this is this is really something that that you you were such a big part of and a big support for and and so I wanted to like celebrate like that the love and memories I had with her through that film and I think I wasn't able to do like anything so direct since then but but I think like my just working at Disney and doing animation itself feels always like a celebration of everything she meant to me. Wonderful. Okay. Um, so is there something about animation that you think would surprise the public or maybe they, they wouldn't know about it that you would want to share? Um, I think, well, I think mostly like the thing that usually surprises people the most is how long it takes. <laughs> it does take a lot of work and a lot of time. Like I think a lot of times when we're doing our scenes, we um, we really want to make it the best quality as much as possible. And I think in a whole week, we if we work really hard, we're usually expected to do about like three seconds, two or three seconds of animation. So that's from like a whole week of working hard, but that's also, I think, 
people would probably be surprised on how like why it takes so long is because every like like we do 24 frames per second and one every 124th of a second like every single frame we're really wanting to craft it as as a beautiful drawing but also like every single 24th of a second we want the character to be the like really portraying the moment and the emotion and the thought that they're doing. So, so like every single part of their eyelash or eyebrow or like just the movement of their pupils or like the corner of the mouth. Sometimes it's just like, is it like one, one pencil width higher or wider? Like that makes all the difference. And I think, I think that's something that, that might be surprising for people that like we're, putting that much work into every single detail that's amazing that is amazing (laughs) look at all the characters that you you know you and many other talented animators have produced so thank you for that oh no thank you (laughs) all right last question for you um so um sorry (laughs) Okay, I just lost the question, but I have it oh, written no. down here. It happens to um, interviewers too. So sorry about that. Um, <laughs> my last question is, um, this is still mostly a male dominated field. So mm. you know, how does it feel for you to be a part of it and doing so, so successfully? I think it, it's definitely changed a lot, like in the recent years too. And I think the great part of it is that like there's so many more role models for people to look look at look to I think there's so many like and and there's a lot more ways in which we can highlight the diversity in the studio and and it I think a lot of times that that lack of a role model can be something that people like it kind of it's it's helpful to have a role model so you th- feel like oh there's someone like me in the spot where I'd love to be and that means that means maybe I can get there too and I think I think it's I mean these days I don't feel that much of an imbalance anymore so I think it's just gonna get more and more like diverse and more and more just like to a point where we don't really even have to wonder and worry about that anymore all right so yeah I think I think it's it's always like onwards and upwards <laughs> well that is awesome now you are one of those role models which is even yeah, cooler so. <laughs> so, <laughs> thank you so much for your time today I really appreciate it